My name is Jake, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna share how to invest with a Roth IRA for a long-term time horizon. Most people understand that investing with a Roth IRA is important, but a lot of people are pretty unsure of what to invest in or how to invest in a, an account type like a Roth IRA. A lot of people take a one-size-fits-all approach when it comes to investing in their different brokerages or different account types. In this video, I'm gonna share, you know, that understanding your investing time horizon and appreciation of asset class classes is a great way to start when planning out your investments in an account like a Roth IRA or a taxable account, whatever the account type may be. Understanding asset classes and your time horizon is so, so vital. So really the goal of this video is to help you, your average person, be able to understand what type of investments you should consider holding in an account like a Roth IRA. For those of you that know my story, my wife and I are in our mid thirties and we're looking to reach financial independence and retire early in the next five years. Right now, we currently rely on our active income. The whole goal is to build up a portfolio, a dividend portfolio that generates cash Cash flow in the form of dividend income so that we can buy our time back. That's what it's all about, building up a passive stream of income. And our dividend portfolio here in M1 Finance is set up very differently than our Roth IRA. So this is particular to our situation because of our goals, because our goal is to reach fire in the next five years, well before we're 59 and a half. The investments that we hold in these two different brokerages are very, very different. So in today's video, we're going to focus on three topics. The first is going to be around historical performance of portfolio allocation models. Second, we're going to backtest portfolio asset allocation. And then third, I'm going to share how I invest with my Roth IRA with a 25 year time horizon. Now let's be honest, these are some pretty nerdy topics. When I say it out loud, portfolio asset allocation, I can't believe that we're all spending our Sunday afternoon listening and talking about portfolio asset allocation. I mean, we must be really, really big nerds if we're watching this on a Sunday. We probably all look a little like this. Your appearance is comical to me. <laughs> <gasps> I'm a nerd. <gasps> so am I. What is this place? A place where we can work on our extra credit assignments without fear of reprisal. Cub, you must be tired from the chase. Oliver, bring our friend a hard boiled egg and some prune juice. <laughs> now that we all have our hard boiled egg and prune juice, let's take a look at portfolio allocation models. So what this is essentially is it's when you're investing, you're investing in a different asset classes. So an asset class could be like a bond, it could be a stock, it could be oil, it could be like a, you know, a commodity, you know, one could even say it could be like, you know, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. There's so many different asset classes out there. It's important if you're an investor that you understand the appreciation or the expense appreciation of each individual asset class because this is going to dictate how you set up your portfolio depending on your time horizon so let's take a look at this from the portfolio allocation models from Vanguard if you were to invest 100% into bonds, you could reasonably expect a 6% annual rate of return. Now, 6% is actually pretty high, but if we look all the way back to 1926, historically, a portfolio focus just on bonds has yielded right around a 6% annual rate of return. And when I use the word yield, be very, very important that you understand what I mean by yield. Yield is just the overall return that you're getting from the investment. It doesn't just mean the dividend yield. So it's important. I don't want anybody to get confused when, when you hear me say yield. So let's take a look at a blended or a balanced portfolio approach. A balanced portfolio would be a mixture of bonds and stocks. And so when we look at stocks here, it's more so like, you know, looking at equities across the board here in the United States. So if you were to invest into an ETF or a fund that tracks the US stock market, not just the S&P 500, this is typically what we're going to talk about. So if you were to invest in a 6040, the traditional balanced fund, you could reasonably expect around a 9% annualized rate of return. 9% is actually really, really good considering that 40% of the portfolio is made up of bonds. And if we look at this from a growth perspective, really skewed heavier towards equities or you know stocks, 100% stock portfolio since 1927 has yielded 
an average rate of return of 10%. So if you have a long-term time horizon, it usually makes the most sense to skew your portfolio more towards a growth al asset allocation than more of a conservative asset allocation. So if, you've ever, if you're a new investor and you hear conservative or aggressive or growth versus non-growth, Usually when we're saying aggressive or growth, it really means that you're focusing more on equities, more on businesses, companies, stocks, and not on bonds. So now that we understand the performance of historical portfolio allocation models, I know that's a mouthful, trust me, um, let's take a look at backtesting portfolio asset allocations. So what this means is what you're doing is you're looking at different investment types, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna look back at different times in, in history and see which portfolio asset allocation performed the best. Now, when I say the best, it really could all, that's also subjective because the best for some person, some people may be different than others. Maybe some people view less volatility as a better port performing portfolio. So it really could, you know, vary depending on the individual. But from this standpoint, we're going to look at it from both lenses, a volatility standpoint and just a pure total return standpoint. So what we're looking at here, if we were to look at the historical performance of different portfolio allocations based off of an investment of $10,000. And this is assuming that no rebalancing is taking place. So you're investing $10,000 from the get-go and how is that portfolio going to perform over time depending on the asset allocation. So over here on the left, you see portfolio assets. There's three individual ETFs that we're gonna be investing in. The first one is SPY, this is the S&P 500. The second is VTI, this is the total stock market, total US stock market here from Vanguard. And then the third is a bond ETF. The first portfolio is gonna be skewed much heavier towards bonds with an 80-20% allocation. The second portfolio is gonna be more of a balanced or a blended with a higher percentage towards equities, but still a huge chunk of 40% into bonds. The third portfolio is gonna be skewed much heavier towards stocks. So this is gonna be your growth, your growth portfolio with only 10% into bonds. The reason why I like looking at SPY, VTI, and AGG, these are all investments that your average person could invest in. Now let's take a look at these three portfolios and let's analyze how they performed since January of 2004. Once again, the first portfolio is the conservative portfolio. The second is the balanced portfolio. And then the third is more the aggressive focus mostly on equities. So looking at the bottom here, the portfolio returns, the first portfolio that with that initial Initial investment of $10,000 in January of 2004, you would have seen the portfolio grow to $27,000 or a, just under a 6% compounding annual growth rate. This is the total return. This is assuming the dividend is reinvested, but you never rebalance the portfolio. The second portfolio would have grown to $41,000 with an annual rate of return of 8%. The third portfolio would have grown to $52,000 with just under a 10% annual rate of return. When looking at the growth of the three portfolios, you can clearly see that the third portfolio, which has more exposure to stocks, outperformed the other portfolios, which included bonds. And so what's really interesting for me is to look at the annual return of each individual portfolio and see how they compare. So portfolio one being the bond portfolio, you can see that it underperformed the other portfolios in most years, but also when there was a bear market, it didn't perform as poorly. So you're not seeing as much volatility in the bond portfolio. It doesn't go up as much as the others, but it also doesn't go down as much as the others. In comparison with portfolio three, the growth portfolio, you can see that each year it typically not always outperforms the other portfolios, but also when volatility hits, you're going to see the most correction or volatility in this portfolio when comparing to the other portfolios. And as I mentioned, this is really important because when you're looking at this, when you're investing, not every investor invests with the same goals. For some investors, having that stability and you know being able to understand and know that your portfolio is not gonna go up and down and fluctuate as high can be a big advantage. So when investing, 
there's more than just, yeah, obviously you wanna go with the portfolio that has the highest return over time. Not everyone thinks that way, especially if you're nearing retirement and you're, you're gonna need the money soon. You don't wanna have that volatility in your portfolio in most cases. So it's not just black and white. Yeah, go obviously with a portfolio that you're gonna get the highest return because you have to understand, are you an investor that can stomach the volatility? Are you someone that can invest, for example, in 2008 and see your portfolio go down over 30%. This is really, really important. And I think it's very difficult to answer that question if you've never experienced and been invested during a bear market. Because when the market only goes up, yeah, it's easy to be a growth investor when all you know is up and to the right. So if we look at each portfolio, the first portfolio being the bond portfolio, since 2004, this portfolio has yielded an average rate of return of just under 6%. The second portfolio has averaged just over 8%. And then the third portfolio has, has averaged just under 10%. This is very much in line with what we saw from the Vanguard portfolio allocation models when it comes to the asset allocation. So now that we understand how this modeling works, and when we're back testing portfolio asset allocation, I wanna walk through with everybody my asset allocation with my Roth IRA, the different investments that I hold in my Roth IRA. You can see them here on the left. The four ETFs that I hold in my Roth IRA are VGT, this is the information technology ETF from Vanguard, VTI, this is the total US stock market from Vanguard, VNQ, this is the real estate ETF from Vanguard, and then VXUS, this is the international ETF from Vanguard. So here in portfolio one, you can see that I have 45% of my asset allocation in VGT, 35% in VTI, 10% in VNQ, and 10% in VXUS. And what I would like to do is compare my portfolio in portfolio one with portfolio two if I were to just invest into the S&P 500. So as you can see, SPY has zero allocation in my portfolio and then 100% in portfolio two when comparing the two portfolios. Now, because some of these ETFs are fairly newer, the portfolio back testing will only go to January 2012. So that's very important to, to remember and to note, it only goes back to 2012. The first thing that I want to note in my portfolio, if I would have invested $10,000 in January 2012, I would have a current balance of $52,000. That would give me an annual rate of return of 18%. The second portfolio, if I were to just invest into the S&P 500, I would have $41,000 in my portfolio with a 15.5% rate of return. And what I found really interesting is when comparing my portfolio with the S&P 500 is that they track each other fairly well, but you see that some years there's actually less volatility in my portfolio than in the S&P 500. For example, what we saw here in 2018. So when comparing the two, you can see that in my portfolio in blue, it has yielded an average rate of return of over 18% since 2012, whereas the S&P 500 has yielded an average rate of return of 15.5% since 2012. Now, I do wanna say there is one caveat here. 2012 is not really representative for me. I, I take this with a grain of salt. I think if we were to put this back to maybe 20 years ago or 30 years ago, you would see a much more normalized rate of return of around 10, 11, or 12%. So take this with a grain of salt. I don't believe that, that I will continue to see an 18% rate of return or an average rate of return of 18% going forward, but that has been the historical performance the last couple of years. Historical performance is never a guarantee of future performance, but I really think that the past has a story to tell. And if you do want to backtest your portfolio asset allocation, I think this website does a really, really good job at displaying the historical performance. The investments that I hold in my Roth IRA serve a very distinct purpose. The purpose of my Roth IRA is focusing on the total return, the growth of the portfolio over the next 20, 25 years. The goal of this portfolio is to give us options in retirement. 
Once we reach the age of 59 and a half, I have no clue what we're gonna be doing realistically in 25 years. 25 years is a lifetime away. The goal of focusing on growth here with this portfolio is it gives us options. If we were to then, you know, when we're 59 and a half, want to purchase a home or, or make a big purchase, we could sell out of the investments and pay zero capital gains tax because the investments are in a tax sheltered account here in the Roth IRA. So as I mentioned from the beginning, my taxable account the goals around that portfolio are fundamentally different than our Roth IRA. Our Roth IRA is all about growth and you know the, the growth of the portfolio over the next 25 years and our cash flow portfolio in our taxable account is all about generating income cash flow today. So they're two very different portfolios with different goals, but they all serve a purpose in our goal, our ultimate goal of becoming financially independent and retiring early. Because my Roth IRA is a long-term investment vehicle, I wanna make sure that the companies or the investments or the ETFs in this portfolio are as passive as possible. That is why I personally, this is my personal approach, I only hold ETFs in my Roth IRA. I do this because I want it to be passive and I don't wanna to have to think about it, you know, every other day, how is my Roth IRA doing, right? I set it and I forget it. And that is the approach that works for me for my investing goals and time horizon. I hope that this video was helpful. I will leave a link to this portfolio portfolio in the description below of how I'm invested with my Roth IRA, as well as a link to the portfolio visualizer, the, the website that I was using just a moment ago to backtest the different portfolio asset allocation. I think the portfolio visualizer is a great tool for your regular investor to backtest and see what type of portfolio mix would make most sense for you. Thank you so much for watching everybody. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you learned something new and I'll catch everybody in the next video. You know what? I think we're gonna be friends. Can everyone say hi to my friend? That's crazy. I just wanted to say thanks. I'm glad you came along, partner.